Hello everyone, I'm by my favourite duck pond, which can only mean one thing. I'm going to do a full road test review on the new Sinus Terrain 125. Yeah, this is fresh for 2021 to meet Euro 5 emissions. So let's get on the road, shall we? Now it is quite a well-dimensioned bike, but it has quite an accessible seat height of 780 millimetres, which, considering I'm only five foot six, is quite welcome. So yeah, key in the ignition. Let's get that turned on. Electric start. Nice and easy. There we go. Let's knock this bad boy into first and head on our way, shall we? So here we go on my full road test review of the Sinus Terrain 125. So this is the 2021 Euro 5 version. So let's talk about the key change and that's the engine on this. It is now a liquid cooled 125cc engine which is four valve as opposed to the 125cc air cooled unit that used to be in this. The power increase isn't massive. It now produces 12.7 brake horsepower and 10 and a half Newton meters of torque. So spec is only up a little bit. So I don't think we're gonna see that much difference when it comes to power. Now Sinus reckon you should get about 120 miles per gallon on this. Now if we go over more conservative, 100 miles per gallon. And if we look at this 14 litre fuel tank, absolutely brimming full, we should be getting about 300 miles in an entire tank. Now I don't think that's too badly going. So yeah, we've now got six gears on this, which is pretty handy, but you do find the gears are typical 125, they're quite short and you have to rifle through the gears and it is very revvy. So the engine on this does have a balance shaft to help reduce those vibrations, but you do find it is quite a revvy bike and you have to be right at the top of that rev range to get this thing to move. Now top speed you should be getting towards kind of 68 miles an hour, but in all honesty for my short steer on it so far, you're gonna need quite a run up to get to that speed. And you're basically in sixth gear, you're almost redlining at 60. It really is in that high rev range and you have to make it work, which you know is typical for 125. I don't think the power increase from the previous version to this one is actually anything significant at all. I think it's rather quite negligible. Now, from a previous review, on the other terrain when you put in that back brake and the combined braking system works it puts on a bit of front brake and with the soft suspension it does kind of pivot you forward more and if we do the same now you do get that slight little transition onto the front forks but i have to say the seat is really comfortable the seating position is absolutely bloody lovely it's the thing with the train 125 it is quite a big bike for 125 so you feel really nice and noticeable. Obviously the big boxes on the back will help. But you do feel like you should be seen on this. Now, like I said, you do have to rifle through those gears and you have to keep it high in that rev range to get it to go. Expect to spend most of your life near, near the red, near that top end of the rev range, kind of 9,000 revs up just to get this thing to accelerate. You can probably hear on the can that you absolutely just have to proper throttle this thing to make it move. If you want a 125 that feels like a big bike, then the train puts itself as a really good option. So the price of the train 125 starts from £2,999 plus on the road. So yeah, you have to pay a little bit extra for those fees to get it going. Now that does come with the uh, pannier boxes on the back, including the, the smaller top box. I think it's about 24, 25 litres. You can pay and upgrade that to the 48 litre top box for an additional 85 pounds. But yet this is basically starting from three grand plus your fees on top, which gets you a lot of bike for the money. Now, obviously I can't say too much about how long it's gonna last you and 
with Chinese bikes, they, they do tend to depreciate, but you're buying this at three grand. I mean, you're easily saving yourself about a grand and a half compared to Japanese bikes on the market. So that's all in all, it's not that bad going. The mirrors are really nicely set out and wide. I've got a little bit of my arms in the view, but I dare say I can tweak it a little bit more. So visibility for the mirrors is really good. It may weigh 162 kilograms, but get this thing moving and it really is nimble to throw about. I wouldn't let the weight put you off. The suspension is a really nice soft setup. We've got the upside down forks at the front. We've got the mono shock hidden away at the back there, which gives a nice comfortable ride. Now, if we put the brakes on, that's just the back brake, but obviously it's combined braking system. So a bit of the front comes on, but that was a really good responsive progressive brake there. Let's do it again. Uh, I'm just going to use the foot brake again. So really decent brake. Let's get up to 30. There's still no one near us. So we're going to throw both brakes on. Yeah, the brakes on this are spot on. I can't argue with that. Now, Sinus themselves don't give you uh, the size of these. But I've had a little look. It's 270 millimeter at the front when I got my measuring tape out and 240 on the back, which is all pretty respectable. See, it's not lightning quick. The gears are, you rapidly work through them. See here, doing 10,000 revs in fifth there at 60, but 9,000 revs now doing 60 miles an hour. So it is a very high revving bike. So you're on, you're on it all the time. So it's the thing with the train, you're probably, you're not gonna wanna lift much higher than 60 mile an hour. But thankfully it has got that balance shaft to kind of reduce those vibrations and make life a little bit smoother. So as I'm going along here, it's time to do a shout out to Lexham Insurance. If you don't already know, Bike Matters channel is powered by Lexham Insurance. They make it all possible for us to do this content. Not only that, but if you're in the UK, and you need to get insurance on your moped, scooter or motorcycle, head on over to Lexham Insurance Quote Form by clicking the link in the top right hand corner now. And when you complete a quotation, the premium at the end will automatically have £20 deducted just because you're a Bike Matters viewer. So a nice little offer there by Lexham. It's got to be said, I love this seating position. Nice and upright, comfortable seat, legs, plenty of space. Arms nice and comfortable with the wide bars. Nice screen offering protection. Albeit you still feel buffering on your head because the screen is kind of below your shoulders. Nice visibility in front of you. The mirrors are great. Braking is everything you, you'd expect really. The windscreen offers us decent basic uh, protection from the elements which is a nice addition on this and with that beak you don't know it just looks a part of an adventure bike doesn't it now we're revving the nuts off the thing to get it to move you are always in the high rev range just to get it to accelerate we're in sixth gear now at 60 miles an hour and we're eight and a half thousand revs or 8,500 revs just to get this thing to move so we're at 60 now I'm pinned it back we're gradually moving so the top speed about 68 I dare say you'll get there but you're gonna need a decent distance to get there I think if you get the train you're gonna have to be happy knowing that the fact that you're gonna average about 60 as a top speed and not a lot more now if you just want to see a video on the spec of the Sinus train 125 the euro 5 version click the link in the top right hand corner now or the one in the description and that will take you through to my video in the studio just a quick walk around looking at all the spec on the train 125 the clutch is lovely and light very user friendly accelerate time come on let's go trying to eat every rev I can get out of this. 
So I've just quickly pulled over, let's talk about the dash and the switch gear. Now the dash itself is basically what you'd expect from the previous Sinus terrain. Uh, digital, analog, the digital bit has, as you can see, the speedometer and miles per hour, nice, large and dominant. We've got clock, we've got the gear indicator to tell us what gear it is. Then we've got odometer, hit mode, we can turn that to trip. Then to the left here, we have the analog rev gauge and just down there, still in digital, is the fuel gauge. Now the switch gear itself, we have flash here, we've got headlight here, we've then got hazards, indicator, horn, kill switch and electric start. So as the switch gear goes, it's all very standard stuff and a typical key in the ignition. Now there should be a little cover on here, which will cover the USB port. But that's basically it, it's a nice straightforward switch gear. It's a bit on the basic side, the indicator, yeah, it all feels a bit basic, but it does the job absolutely fine. Now there's two colorway options available on this Sinus Train 125. We've got the Arctic white, but there's also a Canyon red option, and they both start at the same price. I think for me, I'll probably go to the red option because I think white will just show all the dirt and I'm quite lazy. So what do I think of the Sinus Terrain to do a summary? Well, let's look at the good bits and not so good bits. Starting off with the not so good. So we've had the, uh, the engine change to the liquid cooled 12.7 horsepower motor that we have here today. We've now got the six gears and I was expecting a little bit more. Honestly thought we'd have a little bit better acceleration and top speed than what we have. But the difference between the previous terrain and this one is negligible. They're basically the same bike for me. It would have been nice to have a few other upgrades, maybe change the dash, contemplate having ABS put on it, albeit that adds price, I know. Maybe update the switch gear, you know, so it's just a little bit better than it is now. But then let's look at the positives. And there's no denying, as 125cc adventure bikes go, there's not a lot out there. And for what the Sinus Terrain does for three grand is quite a lot. Now I can't tell you the longevity and how well this is going to be in a few years time. I've got the bike for two weeks and it's basically, you know, done two and a half thousand miles. You know, the exhaust does look used, it is starting to go slightly orange. But I really can't tell you much more than that for reliability. It's been absolutely fine for me today. But yeah, for an adventure bike, 125, you don't have a lot of options out there. But for three grand, the Sinus Terrain is a great. It's got that engine, so you'll get to 60 okay. Just don't expect a lot more than that. The suspension is quite soft. The braking is good. You've got a big old 14 litre fuel tank. You've got a windscreen, you've got the look to that nice beak. The crash bars, the, the pannier boxes as standard. You know, there is a lot going for the Sinus Terrain. So it still puts itself as a great option out there for people. The, the good thing for me is the dimensions of it, the seating position. You feel on a relatively big bike. So that is to be commended. And I'm sure the Sinus Terrain is going to remain a very big seller. Just the changes from the previous version to this one is uh, quite small for me. As a brand, Sinus are one of those, yes, they import Chinese bikes and Chinese bikes have had a bad rep in the past. But Sinus are one of those brands where they keep on working to bring in better and better bikes. So we'll just have to wait and see how it does. But for me, for this price point, the Sinus is a really great, well-priced option, that is for sure. So this brings us to an end of my full road test review on the Sinus Terrain 125. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, go on, you got this far, do me a favour and hit that like rating. If you've got any comments or questions about the Sinus Terrain 125, put that in the comment section below. If you've got any recommendations on bikes or videos you'd like us to do in the future, make sure to put that in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed to the Bike Matters channel, what are you doing? Go on, hit that red subscribe button and ding that notification bell. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.